In the previous video, we stated the Ramsey's theorem without any proof. The theorem basically says that R something something is well defined. Before we prove this, we observe that if R M N exists, then swapping M and N does not change the value of R M N. This is true because let's say there is R M N vertices in the graph. No matter what I do, it still guarantees M vertices linking with red edges or N vertices with green edges. But if I swap red edges to be green and green edges to be red, then we can also guarantee M vertices linking with green edges and N vertices with red edges. So this number of vertices is also R and M as well. Next, we are going to look at some simple cases. In particular, we can actually say the value of R to N right away without any actual calculation. It is n. To prove this, we first show that n vertices work. In this graph, you either have a red edge, which fulfills the two part, or you don't have any red edges, meaning that all edges are green. And so, you fulfill the n part of the problem as well. If we remove any vertex from this graph, we don't have any red edges, or any n vertices having green edges with each other because there aren't even enough vertices to begin with. So we are done with this fact. As you might have guessed, we will be using induction to prove this Ramsey's theorem. The base cases are what we just discussed. In other words, R is well defined when one of the arguments is 2. The clever bit is to prove this inequality. Then by the induction hypothesis, these two are well defined, or in fact, finite. And so this RMN is also well defined, or finite. In fact, we can tighten this inequality a bit by stripping off the plus 1. But the proof will be a tiny bit easier to understand if we keep the plus 1 at the end. And whether adding 1 does not matter to the whole proof anyway, because we only want to prove that RMN is well defined or finite. So now, consider a graph with exactly this number of vertices. Then we consider one particular vertex and all the connected edges. We call the number of vertices that links to the initial vertex with green edge G, and similarly, the number of those that connect to the initial vertex using a red edge would be called R. Then based on this number of vertices we begin with, we have R plus G equal to the total number of vertices minus 1, which is the sum of these R something. Now we can compare the sizes of R and R of M minus 1N. It could be the case where R is at least R of M minus 1N. If not, then G must be at least R of M N minus 1. With that in mind, let's suppose G is at least R of M N minus 1. It would be very similar for the other case where R is at least R of M minus 1N. Think about what it means. It means that among these G vertices, we can guarantee a group of M vertices all connected in red, or a group of N minus 1 vertices all connected in green. Then adding the initial vertex, we can guarantee M red or N green now, because all the N minus 1 vertices together with this initial vertex would form a group of N vertices all connected in green. Exactly the same argument applies when it happens that R is at least R of M minus 1N, then we can always guarantee M red or N green. For example, if we substitute M and N into this inequality, we have it to be at most R23 plus R32 plus 1. Then since we have this base case, and so we actually know these two values to be 3. And so we have an upper bound of R33 to be 7. In fact, you can repeatedly use this inequality to reduce to the base case, where you know R of something is defined. The good thing about this inequality is that it does not only prove the existence of R of something, but also tells you the upper bound of it. 
Now, this upper bound can actually be tightened using the exact same proof, but I thought it might be more natural to include the plus one. So this is the proof of the Ramsey's theorem, and I will release the video for R44 not equal to 17 in a few days. See you in the next video. Bye.